feelings one way or the other about what you'd like to see happen to that Rice School area? Oh, definitely. I'd want it to be a community center. Kind of be a community center. I think you want to have a community center there. Well, I think a community center at the Rice School. So I'd love to see it stay as a community center. I think a community center would be wonderful. A community center creates a sense of community. Every community should have a place where people can gather. And part of the issue is where do you do it? Chuck for joining us today. Chuck you're Skillings welcome. from um, our Holden community, but you're also a teacher here in the Holden. Yes, area. I'm currently teaching fifth grade at Davis Hill. And how long have you been teaching? Oh God, I had to that. ask. <laughs> uh, since 1972, which would be 30 plus years. 30 Let's plus years. Yeah. And, and you grew up here in Holden. <laughs> yes, yes, I did. And did you go to Rice School? No, no, no. I started out at Jefferson School. Mm -hmm. No, excuse me. I started out at Chaffin School. I was uh -huh. living on Bullard Street. Uh -huh. Went to first grade at Chaffin's and then they built Dawson School. Oh, and then you went to Dawson School. So I went to Dawson School for grades two through five. Mm -hmm. But in grade six, they put the back addition where the old gym was. Mm -hmm. And so they had to move the sixth grade out so they could attach the building. So you went to And so I went to Jefferson for part of my sixth grade. Mm -hmm. And then back and to And then Dawson. back to Dawson to end up when the, when the building got completed. Mm -hmm. When you were growing up here in Holden, we'll get to Rice School okay. in a minute, but um, I know that one of the reasons we bought in Holden was because the Recreation Department was so active and there were a lot of things for kids. Were there a lot of things here when you were growing up for kids to do and places to go and the Rec Department? Uh, uh, well, there, were, there was the, whole, the Holden Pool was, was up and running. Uh, Eagle Lake was a place where mm -hmm. we, I went. Um, there was the it was called the Chaffin's Men's Club, which is the CRA now. Oh, right. Um, that had started in the early 50s. We had good tennis. I think you had tennis classes. Tennis? No, well, that, did, that happened later. Did it? That happened, I think, when I was like middle, high, junior high, junior high. high school. Mm -hmm. Tennis became a big thing. Big thing, yeah. Then well, hockey was a big thing for a while. And here in, here in Holden? Well, there was, was yeah, there, yeah, there was an attempt, there was a group of people that tried to get a hockey rink built where the colony homes uh -huh. are down on Reservoir Street. Right. Didn't, didn't work. Happen. <laughs> didn't happen. Didn't happen. No. Yeah. So, yeah, so it's been an interesting stint so far. So far. <laughs> well, uh, as you well know, Chuck, we're trying to um, have folks in town see that the Rice School and the old, uh, the old building as well as the newer part of the building would be a great place to have a community center and we're doing a play there, as you know, because I try to talk you into being in it. but. Um, so, but we wanted to talk to you a little bit about the history of Rice School because I know that you probably have a plethora of information about <laughs> all the history. Yeah, well, I, I think in terms of, of buildings in the town of Holden, Rice School probably ranks with one of, one of the top two in terms of architectural significance, mm -hmm. I think. I would, I would classify the library as probably being Holden's best example of a, of a nicely designed building. Mm -hmm. um, Followed by Rice School, mm -hmm. uh, the wooden the wooden part the wooden, of the, part. the wooden part of the building. Okay. And so, as a member of the Holden Historical Commission, uh, our job is to inventory buildings and um, make recommendations in terms of, you know, when they become subject to projects. Let's right. say. Mm -hmm. um, and so, the wooden building at Rice School has become very important to the Historical Commission, myself, um, and I would like to see every effort made to preserve and try to bring back the building to the way it looked originally, mm -hmm. if at all possible, because there's been a lot of changes to the exterior over the last, what, 100 years. Right. And I, I think you have actually taken some pictures of the, the building as it stands now, but you also have available, anyway, photos of the way it used to look. Yeah, because originally, when it was built in 1910, it was only a four-room building. Oh, there really? There were two rooms downstairs and two rooms upstairs. And that was the town school? That it was, was, the was a center. They were, Holden had district schools mm -hmm. back then, and at one time there were 12 district schools. But when Rice School was built, there were probably only six or seven districts that were still functioning. Mm -hmm. um, and so 1910, it was a, K, a, a one through eight building. But just four classrooms? Four rooms. Grades one and two in one room, two, uh, three and four, five and six, seven and eight. So there were two classes in each in room. Each class. But they're huge rooms. They're, they're, huge they're rooms. big rooms, mm -hmm. and then there were 
they're, they're constructed so that they're these big, I, I call them hallways, but they're really coat rooms. Mm -hmm. They look, if you walk in, they look like big horse, horse stalls because they were partitioned off and there were hooks where you could hang your coats mm -hmm. and they were in a big hall. Um, and then when they built, then in 1922 they put, extended the wooden addition out back mm -hmm. and added almost four identical rooms double the to size match of the to, and double the size mm. of the building. And that's when they began closing all the one-room district schoolhouses. Uh -huh. And the small one-room schoolhouses gave way to the, the building of Chaffins, Jefferson and Rice. Mm -hmm. And Dawson was Dawson. A, a later 1950s. 50s. Mm -hmm. And, but when you taught it at Rice, were you in the old building or the, the new? I was in both. I, when I started, um, I was in the upstairs back room and stayed there for most of my career there. Mm -hmm. uh, and then at one point, um, fifth grade was moved into the what we would call the brick edition, the 1950 edition. Mm -hmm. And that's where I ended my stint at high school was in what used to be the primary way. So yeah, I spent a great deal of time in that building. Mm -hmm. um, and and as, a, as a historian, it has also a special meaning because of its architectural details. It's, um, you know, it has, it's one of the only two buildings in town that have what's called the eyebrow windows. Mm -hmm. They're sort of the curved windows right. up in, in the attic area. Yes. Um, it has a lot of um, dental work. Along, right, the, along the ridge, and then they have the style, yeah, like this, mm -hmm. like this on the, but it's on the eve of the, right, of the yes. building, and then it's got stylized pillars, and then at the top they have sort of a, a stylized Corinthian column with, I think it's, ah, uh, yes. Copper or brass or something? No, no, yeah. it, it's it's wood, I think. Oh, I think it it's carved wood. I don't, I haven't got up to scrape it. It's so high <laughs> up. But um, it's stylized with leaves and they're just striking. The building originally had clapboard siding, now it's got shingle siding. Mm -hmm. And when I started teaching, in, it's 1972, it still had the original windows and they were double paned windows. But in 1972, most of the double panes had gone and they were only single panes. So it was cold? It wasn't cold. It was you had to be very careful opening the windows because they would come crashing down. Mm. And every time they would crash down, some of the, when oh, wow. the loose would fall out because uh, there were these poles that we had to use because the windows were so high yeah. we had poles that would open and close the top windows mm -hmm. so that you'd get better ventilation mm -hmm. um, and then after the f after the junior high fire in 1980 uh, when they put in new unit ventil or not used they re retrofitted the building with ventilators mm -hmm. from the old Greendale Y uh, they also replaced the old wooden windows and put in the aluminum windows right. that are there now. That are there now. Yeah, so there's, there's been changes over the years. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, here in Holden, we don't have very many old buildings. As you said, the library and then this wonderful Hendrix house where we're taping today. The old buildings sometimes can be problematic. Right. Uh, if you go in and try to change the use of the building, sometimes you run into major issues sure. in terms of renovations right. um, and but so so I'm, my concern with the Rice School is not so much what happens to the interior or the use of the interior mm -hmm. it's the exterior, exterior. appearance right. and our efforts through the Historical Commission basically are trying to whatever plan gets moved forward right. that the exterior of the building be preserved the same. well not necessarily remain the same but we try to bring it back to as close to what it looked was mm -hmm. originally and that's the goal of the commission is to try to advocate for that. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I can imagine, I haven't been in the old Rice School, in the old wood part of the school, but I can only imagine that those rooms would be beautiful for an uh, artist because of all the light you get them. But you, you were saying something. Well, they're also large. They're, they're, large. they're larger than most classrooms were, are mm -hmm. or were in the 1950s. Mm -hmm. And that's why lots of people like to stay in the old part of the building when they were teaching because they were square, mm -hmm. basically square rooms. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot more flexibility in arranging a square room as opposed to a sort of a rectangular right. one. Um, and in the newer build, in the newer additions, the rooms tended to be rectangular. Mm -hmm. um, but what was nice about the old the rooms at Rice School was that besides being the four room, the big rooms, they were clustered around a big open space, which included a coat room and a big hallway. Mm -hmm. And so 
over time, we started using that space as gathering places. Sure. And when they built the new schools of Mayo and Davis Hill, they sort of followed that model. They they, had pods. they, mm -hmm. they clustered the classrooms around a big open space. Mm -hmm. So and teachers use those all the time. All the too. time, yeah. yeah. And so I mean, it's 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 a space, and lots of times in schools, space is tight, and you know, so it to have that kind of space is a, is a big advantage and I'm sure that whatever use gets put to the building that space also could be an advantage. We hope, we hope yeah. that it will be, yeah. Um, did you ever do any plays or anything down at the brick building? Were you, I mean you were a fifth grade teacher, right? Did, mm -hmm. so did you do plays on that oh, well, stage fifth, there? Oh well fifth grade traditionally was the swan song of the right. elementary before they moved to the middle school mm -hmm. and so we yearly did a fifth grade production mm -hmm. um, and they were from I mean when we first started we wrote our own dialogue and our own script we even wrote our own songs mm -hmm. we took popular tunes and just, yeah. and just changed the words right. uh, then later on we began to do more of the I call them the canned productions mm -hmm. where you would buy a script uh, we did Tom, one of the ones that I really remember well was Tom Sawyer because we practiced after school on Saturdays because it was such a it was like a three it was a three hour production oh wow <laughs> yeah it was I mean most of most of them only lasted at 45 minutes to an hour mm -hmm. but this was a major I mean we had like 16 different scene set right. changes and, oh, wow. and so it was something you did all the time but mm -hmm. yeah it was it was nice because it was a stage there's a stage right. in the auditorium and you know you can do curtains and lights and mm -hmm. so it was it was a neat experience. Yeah, to, I bet. And, and probably for fifth graders, most boys would never get up and sing solos. Right. And again, you know, peer pressure becomes too great. Right. But yeah, but the space, the space in those buildings were nice. Yes, yeah, good experience for them too. So I'm, I mean, can you see the importance of having a community center here in Holden? Oh, I I I think that I mean every community should have a place where people can gather and. Part of the issue is where do you do it? Mm -hmm. You know, most to towns don't have it. Really, most towns I think don't have a community, community center. center. Um, I don't. You know, part of, part of the issue is I, th I think is a meeting space for any mm. group in town. Generally, the spaces have been small, mm -hmm. and so if you can have large spaces, uh, you should try to hold on to them. I think. But I think so too. But that also becomes a political issue. Oh yeah, it's definitely and, political. And and so, and so in terms of in terms of my relation to Rice School, I want to advocate more for the preservation of the wooden building, um, and that's my goal. Mm -hmm. Is that whatever plan gets forwarded, mm -hmm. that one of the principles of whatever happens there should be the preservation of that wooden building. Mm -hmm. If possible, if possible, and, and that's when the politics gets into it. And part of a community center makes a statement about you as a community as well. You know, and, and the more that a community can take pride in itself, I think, the better the community becomes. Mm -hmm. um, you don't just become a place where you go and sleep and then go someplace else to work. You know, a community center creates a sense of community. But part of being a community is how you see your past, right. and if and you, how you and, see your future. And if, but I mean, but in, in term, from my point of view, in mm -hmm. terms of protecting or trying to protect and preserve the wooden building at Rice School, I see that as a statement of well, if we tear all our past down and destroy our past, as a community, we're saying we don't think it was important, it was important. and so that's why my goal is to advocate for the preservation of the wooden portion of the building. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think a community center is so <coughs> important, at least part of the reason to give you more of a sense of a oh, community. Oh, it does. I mean, groups get together, you right. get to, you know, there's just more interactions, like Holden Days. Mm -hmm. I mean, Holden Days is, is one of probably the best things that's happened Holden in the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. It happens once a day, and everybody mm -hmm. sort of comes together mm -hmm. and celebrates the fact that you're here and you, you can gather and do all these different things. And that's what a community center does. Forward thinking is really an important um, issue that we need to be thinking about. I mean, just look at our water. Did we well, give our water away or we, what? Well, we didn't give it away. We sold it. Well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but but in, in essence, we gave all our surface water away mm -hmm. back at the turn of the century mm -hmm. because Holden never envisioned itself 
being any bigger than a, a community of four or five thousand mm -hmm. people. And so they had more water than they needed and they sold it. Mm -hmm. well, and I'm later on now, a hundred years later, right. we now have to buy some of that same mm -hmm. water back. Mm -hmm. And I'm afraid that's what's going to happen. They're not going to see that we're going to continue to grow well, if but we I, don't I save think that space. At, at one of the town meetings, a former selectman, Ed Hall, stood up at one point and said that you have to remember there is no more land. That's right. And you can't make more land. No. And Rice School sits on about four or five acres of property that's right in the center of town. Mm. Now, we may not have a need for that right this very minute, right. but I can't believe that in another 50 to 100 years, this community isn't going to need or want something in the center in terms of its government or its municipal needs. Right. And you'd have to go back, buy, rebuy property. And, and here, and so I think it's foolish to sell the property. But on the other hand, there's a balance of, as a municipality, can you afford to do everything you want to do? Mm -hmm. I think that we have to realize we have to get heat in there, though. From what I know of the old heating system in that building, it was a mishmash of a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And I think to put it back to something that's decent, I think now people are seeing it's, it's going to be an expensive mm -hmm. proposition. Mm -hmm. So again, politics is going to play into this mm -hmm. aspect. And, and I just hope that whatever is done, that there's a longer term look at, at the property and how it's going to be used as opposed to what can we do right now. Mm -hmm because sometimes the short term right. doesn't have the long term benefits. That's so right. Probably at some point a decision will be made about Rice School and the wooden building and whether it's a community center or do you split the bill. I mean that, those are all going to be political decisions mm -hmm. that hopefully people will get involved in. I hope that, that our town and our town meeting people will speak up and voice their opinion about it and if it does get a warrant put on the docket for that meeting and, and we vote it in then we have to go to a ballot vote or something but I hope that people will see the good sense and saving. I mean municipal offices in the wooden part of the building would be beautiful I would think. My hope is that whether it be a community center whether it be a town office building or I would just hate to see that property go into private hands because once it leaves the public domain in terms of the community, you don't have access to that space. And one thing that we lack in the center of town is municipal space. So we thought it would be good today if we could talk to Cindy Beck, who's the director for the Senior Center here in Holden. Um, this, how old is the center here? Uh, well, this building, we've been in it just about three years. Three years. So it, it was the old Boobar building, and thank goodness people in town had a good enough good sense to do this. What an incredibly beautiful building, and what a great program. Just tell us some of the things that you do here, because you do so much. Okay. Um, well, we're open five days a week, uh, and sometimes we'll have an evening or, or weekend program, but usually it's, it's Monday through Friday from uh, 8.30 to 4.30. We have meals every day. Uh, meals on Wheels go out of here. Um, we have all kinds of classes. We have a, right now we have a um, World War II class. We have a writing in a, and we've had poetry. We have Spanish classes going on. We're really trying to encourage um, uh, folks to come. It's not just bingo and line dancing and things like that. We do have that, but we have other things as well. We have exercise programs. Um, uh, I think you did yoga, didn't you? Did I say yoga here? Yeah, we did for a while. We did yoga. We have a strength training Tuesdays and Thursdays. That's a good class. Um, we have line dancing, two line dancing classes. We have our beginners, and then we have people who have danced for a long time. But uh, And that's pulling in a lot of folks, too. So on an average day, Cindy, how many seniors do you think? Well, it's not just seniors, because I see young people coming in here, and I see grandchildren coming in here. That's great. But on an average day, what do you think the traffic might be here? It's at least 100 a day. It depends on the day on certain classes that we have. Uh, Wednesdays are a busy day. We have quite a few things going on on Wednesdays. Friday's kind of our slowest day. I, someone was telling me that there is a troop here or something of clowns that... What, tell me about that. That sounded interesting. Okay. Yeah, we have um, about five or six ladies who dress up as clowns. We had a clown class, and we had quite a few take part in the class. And then we have five that are in our troop. They go around to hospitals 
to nursing homes, other senior centers, and perform. So you have an outreach program, not only, I mean, certainly with Meals on Wheels, that's outreach. And so I think that, you know, I remember when, when this was up before the town, you know, people didn't want to knock Boo Bar down. They didn't want, of course, that was a really pathetic building, and it was in pathetic shape. It's un, unlike those buildings up there with Rice. Those are in pretty good condition, but I remember the... Um, uh, the fight that some people were giving in town over, you know, oh, we don't want to raise taxes, blah, 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 blah. And they were all concerned about that. And look at this beautiful facility. Have you seen, since this senior center has been here, a coming together of Holden itself because of this center? I think so. We, uh, the building is used by the community a lot. Uh, most evenings we have groups here. We have different um, uh, boards and uh, just groups in town that come and have their meetings and events here. So we're, it's, it's for the whole community. It is for the whole community. And I, I said even though before I was old enough to come to the Senior Center, I, I, I came anyway and never felt, even in the old Boo Bar building, because I would tell stories and we would be there, I never felt not wanted there. And I think that I have the same feeling when I come here. I don't feel unwelcomed, or I think they welcome almost everyone. But it's just unfortunate we can't all do the classes here. We can't, you know, so that's, in my view, part of the reason why a Holden Community Center makes good sense. That then, and it's so close to here, the approximate, you know, you're so close that you're, some of the seniors might want to take a class there. There could be other classes there, dance class and theater classes. Yep. Uh, we do the best we can. I mean, we do have a nice large building, but we have to juggle people around and, and programs uh, to write num you know, the room big enough because a lot of times we get a lot more folks than we expect. Mm -hmm. We've been doing some programs on uh, for ladies on um, beauty and, and makeup and nails, and that brings in a lot of folks. Well, how great is that? So, see, that's a program that because you would have overflow, mm -hmm. If they had something like that up at the Rice, if they had designated rooms for special events like that, yeah. then you could have an overflow. Because we do have to have cutoffs sometimes uh, for the number of people that can then attend just because what room I'm going to have to put them in. And, that, and that's fabulous, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I'm glad. I've been noticing all the hustle and bustle around here. It's very busy and, um, you know, you don't. Sometimes people think of Senior Center as being a place where people just go and sit. Well, that's certainly not the case here in Holden. Well, we try to keep them busy. That's a good thing. That's why, that's why you're a real good director for this, too, oh, Cindy. Um, anyway, do you personally, aside from being the director of the Senior Center, have any feelings about the town holding on to the old Rice School and the newer part of the building uh, to use as a Holden Community Center. I think it's important that we use that name and not just Rice Community Center because it's not just for Rice, it's for everyone in Holden. Do you have any feelings one way or the other, aside from, you know, being a great director? Here? Well, I, I just think that, you know, places are needed um, for, for people to get out and, and uh, you know, learn and have a good time. And we do as much as we can here, but uh, we have to limit the age. So there really isn't a place where folks can go and uh, you know, take classes and things like that. We try to, we include some younger folks, but uh, we can't do too much. Well, that, you know, that's true. And uh, I, I just think it would be fabulous. And a community center, I Miss Becca, you're going to be in um, A Stitch in Time Saves Nine on April 24th. I haven't told her which role she's going to be yet, but she's agreed to do it as representative of the senior center and a, uh, an important member in our town to help us show that that little theater could be, a community theater is great. Your sons are in theater, so you know what a Oh, yeah, it's great. It's a lot of fun, and I love going. I First time I'm going to be acting in something, but I, I like going to them myself, and it's nice to have them around. It would be nice for Holden to have a little community theater because it really does bring a town together. I think any time you do a theater production, you become like a small little family anyway, so we'll be looking forward to that. Thank you so much for talking with us, Cindy. I look forward to doing the show together. Yeah. Thanks. Um, thank you for stopping and talking with us here in this beautiful senior center. Isn't it a lovely building? It really is. Have you found this to be an asset? I know you're Mrs. Hugo because I know you from here in town, so I hope you don't mind I use your name. Not a bit, no. Um, what do you think about this senior center? Do you think that when it was built, it brought the community together? Oh, I think, I think it certainly did, and it was a huge advantage for the uh, seniors who really wanted to congregate in one place and have all the facilities necessary, yeah. Because as we remember, that was the Boo Bar building that was here, and they tore that down, wasn't it? The Boo Bar? Yes. 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 
And, and so some people in town were against this building too when they first when it was first brought up. Which is silly as it sounds. Well, yes, I think there, there were some problems because there was not enough town input. Mm -hmm. But I do remember certain members of the neighborhood did raise money for the senior center by uh, showing the Butler House, you know, giving tours of the Butler House and enabling the town to sell sell the Butler House and then the money came back to the senior center. And I think that was a very smart move because the Butler House is a nice house to have there and it sort of gives us a, unfortunately we don't have a great big town center, you know, but that's why my view of the Rice School community area and the community center here in Holden for the town, not just seniors, but for the town, it is so important that we... Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah, excuse me. And it, it really, if we're going to do community planning, we should start with what we have and enhance the buildings and the properties that we have. And there's certainly are many ways to do that. That's right. Some people see that as a tax burden. Up there. I've heard that a lot this morning about tax burden. But I, it is sad because if we'll remember back what happened to our water and how our forefathers gave our water away and then we have a you know reservoir here built for Worcester. But it's not a tax burden because it's like throwing the baby out with the bathwater, isn't it? To, to have that piece of property. Beautiful building. Beautiful building. And you've been on this committee since the conception of trying to, yes. can you tell us a little bit how it started? Because I know that you've saved that area a couple of times from its uh, fate when it wanted to be axed. Well, it is an area that consists of five acres right in the center of town with a historic building, a building on the National Register of Historic Places. And it's a, it's a prime example of the uh, turn of the century finer architecture in central Massachusetts. In fact, in central Massachusetts, it's regarded as a prime example of Clements was the architect, and he was, he, uh, he worked with Earl, the man who uh, was very famous in Worcester, built a lot of Worcester oh. buildings, built a library. Right. He was, they were in business together, and then he went on his own. I, uh, so he, uh, he was a quality architect and uh, he was chosen to design that building. And it certainly has served a good purpose. Oh, and it's just beautiful. I mean, you could almost, people ask us, you especially, I'm sure about, what are you gonna do with that old building? Well, I could almost see a, a museum of sorts in there and having school children coming from other areas and towns being bused there to go through that building on a during the school year. To, and, and that's revenue for the building and, and for the town to keep it up and, and what a, how proud you could be. There, there are these uh, uh, huge, uh, rooms, of course, the classrooms with beautiful light, and uh, it's it's sad that the original windows are gone, but uh, there is still uh, a, a great amount of light in these rooms that makes them exceptionally uh, good for uh, all studios, anything. Yes, dance studios. Yes, absolutely. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say. And it'd be wonderful municipal office space of which we we sorely, we sorely lack at the moment, mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully it will be considered as you know such. And so how do we how do we make that happen? Do we go to town meeting? Which I hope that some people are watching this out there because uh, the purpose of this is to let the people here in Holden really um, spark their thinking about. Well, gee, yeah, we want to keep this here for the town of Holden. Uh, I think it should be called the Holden Community Center only because we don't want to. I, I'm trying to keep myself from saying the Rice Community Center because you don't want to think it's exclusive That's just right. to the Rice community. Yes. Yes. It is a Holden Community Center for in the, everyone it's that an lives asset. here. It's a super asset for everyone in yeah. town. Mm -hmm. And it can be uh, renovated, and I use that term loosely, but it can be renovated at a, a I won't say minimal, no, but a, a, reasonable, a, reasonable, a reasonable amount of money. And uh, I'm sorry that the boiler uh, failed mm. uh, yes. in an untimely <laughs> man manner, but uh, there are, you know, I'm sure there are ways that 
money could be raised to put in a new boiler to service both buildings. Absolutely, I think so. And um, I keep saying this in the footage that we're shooting uh, for uh, HCTV, but there is going to be a play there on April, Saturday evening, April 24th. A lot of people here in town going to be in that show, but that's yes. that's to raise money and to show that you could. A community theater is a wonderful thing for the community. Oh, it's, it's it allows good. people, and especially if you do quality theater, and believe you me, if I'm doing it, they're going to have some quality theater. But it, it, even if it's just groups that want to get together and read a play and use a space and put on their own show, you know, it's a community theater. should be used that way. For people of all ages, that's the important thing. Yeah. Absolutely. And in fact, we're hoping to have a camp, a summer drama thing there next summer. If it's going to be, if it's going to be open for people to rent, I think that it will be rented and there will be a 10-week class there. So, yeah. Well, let's hope both buildings are used and that one of them is not just uh, put in mothballs, you know, that will, that will, that would, that would be very sad. And there's no need for it, really. It could, it, this can all be accomplished if you have a little faith in your community. And I know there's a lot of enthusiasm for, for, for this project, you know. And we have a group of young people, younger, quote, quote, younger people who live in, in the area who are very excited about doing something with those buildings, something, you know, that that's beneficial, beneficial. to the town. Young and, families, I would think, with oh, absolutely. children that would love to have classes there, and, and teenagers that would have classes. And it also protects their properties, too. I mean, they don't, they, I don't think they would care to see 40 units go up there or, or the land. Um, so, if, Mrs. Hugo, if you could say one thing to the people out there in Holden, if you could make a plea of sorts to <laughs> just think about what we need to do here before town meeting. So when we do go to town meeting, I mean, this is why we're doing this fast. We, I, we need to, the people need to be on our side, I think. I hope they are. Absolutely. And uh, it's a project that will benefit the whole town. And at town meeting, I, I hope they will vote to provide the funds for this, pro whatever, whatever they may be. We're on the, we uh, tend to be on the lower side. We think this can be done very reasonably. And um, then it goes to ballot. That's, that sometimes could be a stumbling block, and we hope it isn't, because it's such a worthwhile project. And we, we had hoped to raise the money and have this work finished before town meeting, so that it would be not it would not be necessary to have a you know right. to have. But you know what we will be able to do at town meeting is say we earned so much money doing that play on April twenty yeah. fourth. Here's here's the amount we did earn, and that was just one production that we did. And you can see that it could be an asset, could help with the operating budget. The involvement is wonderful, you know, the fact that we can get so many people from so many different parts of town interested, and you, you've been so good to do this. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today and for um, st stopping and giving us your time to talk about the community center. Thank you. Thank you. About it anyway, I mean, I know you know where the Rice School is. Yes, I do, and I think it's a lovely building. And the old building and the, the yeah, new Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not that I had children going to Rice, but I think it's a you know a nice, architecturally pleasing building. Let's so what if you had a thought about it? What what would you think that we should do with that? Should we flatten it out and sell the land? Should the town hold on to it? Should we try to keep the buildings up? Should what what do you have feelings about that? Well, I thought that there was a proposition that part of it would become housing, and part would kind of be a community center, and I think. That would be a good use of it. I don't think they should take it down because, um, you know, it's a it's a nice building, and I know that the neighbors have been sort of opposed to housing, but I don't understand why because the building's not going to change. Well, I think it's the I think I can I don't want to speak for the neighbors because I don't know, but I kind of get a sense that well, there's not enough room to have a whole lot of housing, uh, so it would have to probably be condos of some sort. And that old part of the old school would not make great condos only because you'd have to put so much in it. You'd get very little condo space out of it unless you used it for muni municipal offices or a museum of some sort or something like that to um, 
so you utilize the building without and without having a whole lot of traffic come in or without having to knock it down and build a stack of condos on top of each other. Well, that's interesting because I went to North High in Worcester, and it is now it is. condos. Yes. And our 40th high school reunion, we had a tour of it. And um, the old round tower room where I had biology is lovely, so that it's possible to do things. I think it would be possible, but you wouldn't get very many out of that one. Yours was probably a lot bigger, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. There were some uh, buildings in Everett, I know, when we lived there, that was an old school building, and they turned it into condos. And I said, Rod, I'd love to live in a condo, but it was a huge True, true, that's true. But I, I don't think they should raise the old part. And, um, you know, I know that if, if a building stays empty, yeah. it deteriorates. Right. That's right, and yeah. cold. Yeah. We have a true. problem with the boiler now. The boiler yeah, mysteriously has gone out. I'll say that. But um, So hopefully we can get a new boiler that will, you know, take care of the building so that if, there, if it's left cold and cold, it'll re deteriorate even faster. I'll be devil's advocate, yes. though. If you leave the building yes. in these tough fiscal times, yes. um, it's almost money down a rat hole unless you get something back no, from it So right. and it gets some utility out of it. That's right. Absolutely. I agree. So that's why it needs to be rented to, yes. to uh, artists. I mean, artists could certainly have a studio in that yes. old building. They're beautiful yes. lights, beautiful windows. So you could rent it to an artist. Uh, a dance, a dance, a dance class, yes. a, a community what theater. Did, whatever happened about the um, whatever some what was it called business? Oh, the incubator program. Yeah. You know, it's funny. It's really kind of funny because that was an idea that came up that we thought would be very feasible and work really well. I I keep saying we only because I'm on the committee now. I didn't have anything to do with it. Mrs. Hugo and Mrs. Kakachi, those those people have worked tirelessly on this committee. I've just come in at the last minute here we're going to do a play there but um they had that idea about the incubator and now it's funny you know the reed rico yes. property is going to be um empty and suddenly the selectmen had a great idea that uh, why a business an incubator might be wonderful over there so i think that's a little curious all right yeah so, so who knows who knows so it's not that it, incubator is a good idea yeah. And they had actually looked at that spot as the second incubator once the Rice School incubator got off so, the ground. Yeah, well, so. you have some thoughts about that. Uh, I don't want to see us have a huge capital expense either. We've, we've got new schools. and But you know what? You can't do theater in these schools. No, you can't. No stages. And well, there are stages, but you couldn't rehearse at night. They wouldn't just open up a school and let you go rehearse. That's true. Chances, fees, and such right. would be yeah. prohibitive for you. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Well... I never thought of it as an artist um, neck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's true, but that's a very good idea oh. because we don't have anything out here, and there are many, many very talented people in Holden. Oh, absolutely. Well, the, Cindy Beck was just saying here at the Senior Center, you have lots of classes, and sometimes they're overflowing. Mm -hmm. You can't, You have to sign up. Do you particip participate in the classes here? I don't. No. Talent, I have not. No, no. I just handle the checks for the friends, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That you one. At, at the, the friends here at the senior center? Our friends of the Council of Aging, yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. And see, that's a good thing. So why couldn't you have a friends for the Holden Community Center and have yes. that as being part of the budget that would help? Because friends of the library uh, support them. That's right. I think that's the secret, you know, to get a, a, a group of people that are willing to invest time and money. Yeah, oh, time. Definitely time. And that's why we're doing that play on that Saturday, April 24th. Yeah. I will we see you at town meeting, I'm sure. Yes, you will. And yeah. so we're going to ask people to, at town meeting to say, we don't want them to get rid of that. That's true. Can okay, we, very can good. Can we ask you to think about that and maybe? Shall do. Oh, thank you Should so do. much. No so all of you Holden natives, you live here in Holden? Yes. Yeah, I do. Yes, yes yeah. yeah. Do, um... Do any of you have any feelings one way or the other about the Rice School and that building up there and what should we do with it? Do you have any feelings one way or the other about that? I think it should be sold. You do? Not, oh, no kidding, really. Yeah, what, I why? I don't know. I just, I just do. I, well, think, what, I think it's costing the town more than the town can afford. To to the town hasn't money. put a penny into it. You the, know that? It will. It will. Well, it hasn't so far. No. It hasn't put one cent into it so far. No. The okay. people that are trying to save it are the Because you know what? What's your name? Joy. Joy. Well, I, it's just that we there's only so much space that you can use for a community. Yeah. Do you? I mean, you guys have a great facility here, don't you? Do you take any of the classes here? 
we have a lot of things that go on. Here. A lot of things that yeah. go on. Well, yeah. wouldn't it be yeah. nice for other members of the community to have that happen for them too? The young families and the um, people that never married that were yeah. single and maybe they want to go, you know, but they I can't think, come. I somebody. think I think yeah. you want to have a community center there. Yes. <laughs> Oh, you do? How did I get that idea? I don't know. Do you? Do you think that instead of selling it? Really? I mean, I think that we can make the town's oh. people, the people that live in Holden, understand that it's good for the whole community. Look, it's so yeah, close here so. to this one, too. And you've got the seniors yeah. right here. You can have younger people. I mean, it would just... Well, I can under, I can understand your reason. Well, I mean, I want, who do you think? Who do you think? Who's going to run it? Who's going to run it? I suppose the town will run it. I suppose that's true. But it has to have a community leaders really be on a board or something well, that helps the town control is, that. The town is so strapped for money. Right I agree now. that that we don't need to make we huge need, investments. We don't need to uh, make more problems. Well, well, I just think, uh, does anybody else have any, it seems like, what's your name? What's your name? Sophia. Sophia, it seemed like you were agreeing with me a little bit about maybe that, you know, I think, yeah, I, I would well, like I'm, to I'm see saying, I'm not like against, the, I'm not against the town community center. You're just against the but town spending more I'm money. I'm just against the town putting we have any money, money right? involved in it, that's all. Yeah, yeah, well, I can understand that's, that's that, you know, against. that's, because you're on a fixed income, too, and if I understand that. they could sell that. it to a private owner. But you know what a private owner would do with it. Well, do you know what know. a private owner would do with it? Either yeah. knock it down no. and build condos there? No, 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 mm. what I'm saying, if you could sell it to a private owner who would well, if you turn could it into a community center. If you could center. sell it to yeah. the community center committee or something like well, that and let them be in charge of it, then yes, I agree. I just don't want the town involved in the finance. Yeah, you cannot tell them what to do with it and that's what I'm afraid. You yes, know, that's private. right. <laughs> private. That's right. You're right. Okay. You're right. So the, the people in town should have the power to say that's right. we would yes. like to keep this for yeah. the town and for right. the community. Yeah. So yeah. rather yeah, than and, so hey ladies we're gonna have a play there on April twenty fourth. I hope you'll come and see it's Betty. Smaller, it's smaller. Betty? Yeah. Is it Betty? What? I hope that you'll come and see the play that we're going to do in the theater up there. There is a little theater in that new part of the building. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, really? And yeah. we're going to do an old-fashioned melodrama oh, uh, in there for that'd the be town. Interesting. That'll be fun. Uh, April 24th, Saturday evening, April 24th. So maybe we've th made you think about it a little bit. Huh? Well, does anyone else have any any other comments about the community center? You ought to keep no. it just for the playing field. And the playing fields. Thank you very much. You that. That's right for the soccer and and baseball and one, tennis courts. You know there are tennis courts up there. That's yeah, that's the, we should be using them why, why because this them? facility is so nice. Don't you love your senior center? Don't you love it here? Oh, it's so it's nice. Very, I think it's wonderful. For the people, oh, yes. oh yes, I think it's fabulous, and I'd like to see that I for young families to too. Do, do you feel like when this center got built that it brought our community of Holden together? I think, oh, I think uh, a I little think bit so. more. I think the center was yeah. a wonderful idea, yes. and I'll agree a lot of people were against the center. That's right. I know, and that never made sense idea. to me. Yeah. Well, I don't want the town dishing out more money it doesn't have. I don't either. I don't say how they can dish out money they don't have, but I think they have money they don't dish out that they have. Because That's we, what I think. <laughs> we, we have people coming from West Boylston, Worcester. Oh, you do here to this center because it's so nice. See, West Boylston doesn't have anything this nice. Worcester really, I mean, they have some places that are this nice. But if, if we give away a jewel that we have here in the center of town, just like we gave away our water, our forefathers gave away the water and said, oh, we can't afford, you know, we'll take the money for that and just sold the water. And now we have reservoirs that Worcester owns here in, in Holden. We should save that jewel and have it for the community. I hope that... Yeah, well, I'm glad. That, I'm glad that you agree. I'm. I, I'm hoping that will that it'll happen for us. Do you feel in any way that a big community center will draw people away from here too? From here? No, this is for the senior centers. The seniors can't go up there. Oh, seniors oh, can sure go up there can, too. Oh, but that's the whole point. Then the seniors that are grandparents here might say, "Hey, you know, Johnny, I met you in in a class up there, and I don't really have grandchildren that live close to me. So you want to come on down to the senior center? We're going to do a grandfather granddaughter yeah. dinner, yes. and you know, exactly. could you come on down and sure. be part of the, that should down and with me? It should be both. It should be open. You know, just because I was never old enough to be in this 
Center did not mean that I didn't feel welcomed when I came in here. Oh, I no, felt no, like no. I could come, even in the old one, where no. the old one was, oh, yes. Yes. that I could come and be part of it and enjoy What's the center. Yeah, that's right. But see now, here, look at here. Here's a young lady with a kid in here came to the senior center. She must be a daughter of someone. Hi. <laughs> Are you at, who is that? She's, she's one of the deliverers. Oh, you deliver. Oh, well, we need to capture her, too. Can we talk to you for just a minute? What's your name? Lois Johansson. Jo Lois Johansson. Who's this fine young fellow you got with you? What's your name? Benny? Bennett. Bennett. What a nice name, Benny. I bet you have older brothers and sisters, because I substitute teach here in Holden, and I do it at Dawson and Mayo and Rice. Do you have older brothers and sisters? Oh, and they go to school? And where do they? Seven. Yeah, seven. First grade? Mm -hmm. Where's he? At? What's Davis, Hill? Davis Hill. I don't get to go to Davis Hill very often. Um, you must have some strong feelings about the Rice School and um, old buildings up here. Do you have feelings one way or the other about what you'd like to see happen there? Oh, I think a community center oh, at the Rice like School would be yeah. nice. Wouldn't that be nice? I do think that would be nice. Oh, well, that's good. I yep. your kids would like it, too. Oh, I think they would have a ball there. It would be... I think the community would benefit from something like that. Yes, I agree. You know, yeah. I'm so glad that you feel that way. Yeah. Um, so you're not worried about uh, it uh, being sold, uh, that our town might sell it off? Well, I would hope that they wouldn't, because why not use the resources that we have, you know, and build on them? You know, the problem is always money and coming up with it, but, but it would be good to use what we have. It would be good to use what we have. I, you know, I can't oftentimes think that I couldn't imagine that each family, young family in town would say, okay, once a year, one time donation once a year, I'll give you $10. Don't raise my taxes. I'll give you $10 to work t for the budget of the community center. Does that sound like an idea that might work? That sounds reasonable. Oh, it does sound reasonable. A one time donation instead of raising the taxes towards a community center would be wonderful. Well, just 10 bucks or something yep. for a family. That, that, thank you so much. Again, your name is Lois Johansson. Lois, I'm sorry, Lois. Thank you so much, Lois, for answering our questions and talking to us. And Bennett, you'll be going to school before long, won't you? Want to say hi to your brother? Say hi, Clayton. Oh, thank okay. you, Lynn, for stopping and talking to us. Um, my question today is do you have any feelings, one way or other, about what we should do with the Rice School area? You know, the old buildings and the new one? I sure do. I'd love to see that stay as a community center. The Rice School has such a special place in the heart of the community that just to do something that would, would offer services and be a place for the community to gather I think would be a really nice thing. So I think it's important that all the people here in Holden get that word out that we, you know, I hope that you'll talk to your friends and neighbors. You already have by just being on air here, but people need to understand that it's important, don't you think, that we oh, don't do. get rid of it, give it away? Mm -hmm. And what kinds of uh, classes or things would you like to see going on in there? We, we have some now, but... Right. I was just going to say, I think they do some wonderful things there now as well. And some of the things that I'd like to see expanded is they have a gym area, so maybe to offer some of the, the sports groups in town, because they do such a wonderful job with town sports here in Holden, just to offer them some space, as well as community centers where they could do different things uh, as far as dinners or just gathering space for the community would be great. It would be wonderful to have, think that Holden would come together say even at the end of Holden days when when it's a great day here in Holden for a lot of people get out and see their neighbors to have a community supper there mm -hmm. or ha to have a theater production that night we are going to have a theater production there oh are you really we are on April 24th we're going to do an old-fashioned melodrama um so as far as you're concerned it's a positive in the center of town oh absolutely it would be a huge loss I think to see it go to something commercial thank you so much for talking with us Liam. you're very welcome uh, so I'm here with Nancy and Lynn, two lovely ladies from here in Holden, and I coerced them to come over here and talk to me about maybe their feelings about what we should do with the Rice School Center area, you know, the old Rice School building and the newer Rice School building. Do you have any thoughts on that, Nancy? I think a community center would be wonderful. I think we could really use it, and there's plenty of space, old and new, and I'd really like to see it opened up again and some life brought back into it. What sorts of things would you like to see happening in that building? I think... Um, theater for the for the children and um, uh, arts and crafts um, I'd like to see a knitting class or something like that just something that you know that might attract all ages sure they have uh, knitting classes at the senior center we were just over there but they fill up really they can't even let all the seniors take the class because it fills up so fast never mind letting some of us younger people in town 
look at my gray hair and think not younger, but uh, use use the building, uh, you know, for teenagers you had mentioned earlier. And how about you, Lynn? I think that you maybe aren't quite sure of what you think about it yet. I just think they should do something with the building. I don't think it should be torn down or anything like that. I think that um, it'd be nice if they did something for our young teenagers. There's really no place for them to go, um, even just hang out and play cards or whatever they're going to do, uh, games, something for them. Um, we don't have anything like that in the area. And I that would be a good thing for them. I think that's a great idea and they could walk from the high school. That's yeah. just it. Exactly. They need something. And they need, you know, all ages. They should do something with it. They shouldn't tear it down. The, the, uh, I'm glad that you feel that way and I, I'm assuming that you feel they shouldn't sell it either. They no. shouldn't sell it off. No, because I think if they can do something in town with it, I don't see why they can't. They've, um, they've done buildings in town that, like, you take the Jefferson School and they've, the, they've remodeled that and it looks beautiful. Um, why can't they do that with the rice school exactly what a good thought I, I thank you so much ladies for stopping and talking with me it's real important that you go to town meeting i hope that you've been here 18 years how many years 16 16 years here in town so i'm sure you probably go to town meetings and that's where we'll have to we will have to kind of speak up there i think yes and this will be on tv so you'll all your friends and neighbors are going to be saying did i see you yeah, great so they'll agree with us right <laughs> so. absolutely thank you so thank, much thank, thank, you. You. thank you bye so we have Lori welch here from town how long have you lived in the town Lori? be 14 years in July. Oh, almost the same time as us. That was when we bought yeah. 14 years ago in July. We can't, were you pregnant when you came? Yes, I was. So was I. <laughs> so my question to you, though, is um, do you live Do you live in the maze? Do you, mm -hmm. you live up close in this area. Right. So do you have feelings one way or the other about what you'd like to see happen to that Rice School area? Oh, definitely. I'd want it to be a community center. My kids went to Rice School, and they are very involved with, like, DI and with theater and stuff, and there's nowhere to do that in town. So you end up trying to scramble, and the school schools aren't open at night when you need them. It's really hard to get time, so I think that would be a great thing if we could have a community center. I think people would be willing to pay whatever the fee was if they could use it for things like theater or DI or Girl Scout stuff. I mean, there's a lot of need out there. There's just not a lot of availability in the schools. And I, I see it as a jewel here for our town. How many towns don't have even the option? Well, I also think, too, because it's still keeping the neighborhood, like, it's not changing it. And as far as the traffic flow goes, it wouldn't be a lot unless it was an activity, but that was the same way at Rice School, too. And you have the parking lot there, I just think, or people can walk. I just think to keep the whole small town kind of thing is a good thing. So I'd, I'd like to see it be a community center. I'll, I think a lot of us would, and we hope that by doing this little mini documentary on it that we can encourage people to go to the town meeting. and. I know that money is hard for a lot of people right now. It's it's tough for a lot of people, and I don't think that we're asking a great big tax hike or anything like that, just uh, maybe to have some small amount of funds to keep the buildings from rotting. And, you know, they're in actually very good shape right now, but if the boiler, which went out, if it doesn't get put back into the old part of the building, a cold building deteriorates. Well, and then how can you sell it if, if it's deteriorating? I mean, that's the other thing, too, unless they haze it and bring it right. down. And, right. you know, who's going to buy, well, maybe the land's worth something, but you have to look at it that way, too. Yeah. So. It would be to our advantage to keep the building. What, so. what a great uh, art gallery or museum oh, it would yeah. be in that old building, with that beautiful light. I mean, here at the library, which is where we are, there's a beautiful art room here where local artists can um, show their work. Mm -hmm. And we can have photography classes. Yeah. yeah, the recreation department really needs a place like that. I mean, that's the whole thing, to run a lot of their things. I think that would be a good thing. I think people would really see... I don't know. I, I still think it's a good thing, but like you said, money's tight. I don't know. It's it's hard. It is. But when you mentioned fee, I think that you know, if each family had a fee of ten dollars a year, a ten dollars to use the facilities there to be able to go in and take a class. I mean, you'd have to pay for your classes, but that would be paying the instructors that were coming in. But to have that facility, I can't imagine that. Yeah, because I mean, with the yoga class, the what. The recreation department's always done. Where are you going to do that if you don't have rice? You can't use the schools during the school year. You can't, um, I mean, the senior center you can't use either because the seniors use it. So, and there's still a need for things like that that they offer during the day, during the year. And even for childcare, like with the program that they used with the pool in conjunction with the pool, I mean, they've always used rice that way. So, I don't know. I don't know. People really need to look at that. So, well, I hope that you will encourage your neighbors and your <laughs> friends, well, you already have just by agreeing to be. A part of this uh, to get out at town meeting and to vote and okay. help us save rice school in that area. Oh, thank you so much. You're Mike. welcome. Thank, thank you. you.
So. Well, we have a lot of families here in Holden with young kids. That I mean, you couldn't. All three of my children learned to swim over at the Holden pool, and now they have this beautiful pool over Thank there. Thank you. Thank you. A lot of hard work, and it was that. well worth it, I oh, believe. Absolutely, to get a dive class too. Yeah. So how many different? I think you said there was like 57? There's 50, 55 to 60 different classes wow. that we offer. So we try and keep ourselves busy and out of trouble, uh -huh. and give the kids an opportunity to express their ideas and different things that um, we hope will they'll find interesting. Mm -hmm. And you do a day program for parents that work that I do. can have their children in a day program. A day care program. Mm -hmm. It's the all day summer program held at Dawson School mm -hmm. um, where the kids get dropped off as early as 7.30 and picked up at 5.30 but the beauty of it is we take the kids across the street to participate in swimming in lessons swimming. and then they can participate in the, in the after school open swim program there. Mm -hmm. So they they enjoy that. So it really is a, a little summer camp it is. for kids. They it get, is. And I know that a lot of the instructors are young people that have grown up here in town and come that back they in the summer to work. Yep. I have many of the staff also work in the before and after school programs mm -hmm. throughout the school year. So right. they're familiar with, with, the the, with all the kids, mm. which is wonderful. That's fabulous. I think you've done a great job. I know Thank I've you, only Gwen. been here 14 years. You've been on... Have you been on? The, have you been this done this job for 14 years? No, I've I've worked in the recreation department for 10 years 10 and years. five years mm -hmm. as the director. So, uh -huh. yeah, I know that when we first came to Holden, that was one of the reasons we bought here was because of the great recreation department. I think what you brought to the table was new classes for adults as well, because you use this building here at Rice School. I do to have. I my husband's done basketball. Yeah, you know, on yep. Thursday nights and. Yep. And you've done aerobics here? Aerobics and, and yoga, and I try um, a perennial gardening class was very well accepted. Ooh, nice. Um, I, I, I try and run the whole gamut because there are d many different adults that have many different interests, mm -hmm. and I want to try and target everybody. Sure. I don't want anybody to feel left out right. or neglected. And that's why it's a Holden Community there Center. It's not, I mean, the Senior Center does wonderful things, but it's that's really for a designated population. That's true. And a Holden Community Center to be for everyone. In that perennial mm -hmm. gardening class, did they garden outside here at the building? Well, what no. What they did is they plotted their own yard, uh, and I then see. they ha we had an instructor in here to show them the best plants that would work well uh -huh. in their yard okay. so it was Maybe you individualized can talk <laughs> one of those instructors into taking them outside for a field trip and having them plant something outside outside the building <laughs> yeah. so we get the building all pretty yeah. at the same time they're taking a class you know you got to have hands on that's education. true that's true <laughs> get your hands dirty that's right yeah well it's it's really great that you do all of these programs for Holden I sure hope that we all wake up and you know make sure that we keep this little jewel right here in the center of town for it our recreation department and for our community center. I think it would be fabulous. Thank you, Gwen. I Thank appreciate it. Thank you so it. much for talking with us. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. And here we are at the Rice School. As you can see, it was built in 1910 on the side of the building. Beautiful architectural features on the top of the building with the brass and the uh, eyebrow windows and the dental molding that's around the top. It's just such a beautiful old building. You can almost hear the kids joy coming from that building. Uh, but as we can see, some of the building, parts of the building are starting to be run down a little bit, although they're in very good condition and certainly they're salvageable. We found that out with the Jefferson School. We hope that we can make this a community center, a, a true community center. Here we are right up behind the senior center. You can see the baseball field from the senior center. and What a nice little jewel for right here in Holden. Uh, as we walk over this way, you can see the newer part of the building. I built in the 50s, and actually parts of it seem to be in a little worse condition than this old part of the building. But there is a nice theater in there, and um, nice big classrooms in this building, so you can almost see art classes and drama and dance classes, artist galleries. Really, we, we are asking the people of Holden to come up to the plate and not, not raise your taxes. We're not asking for any tax money. We, we're asking you to think about this as a jewel here in Holden in the center of our town. It could be bustling with activities for teens and young people and young families. and It really gives you a sense of community when you belong to that sort of organization. We could have a Friends of the Community Center, just as the Gale Free Library has friends for the Gale Free Library and the Senior Center have their friends that help them out. And I don't see why we can't also be able to support, through community efforts, a community center. And it should be called the Holden Community Center.